In this video, I'm going to give you some tips how to get going on your semester hackathon app. I love this project. And what I want to do is walk through that really tricky, really confusing, really annoying parts to make sure you're able to build something out on your own. Obviously, I don't have a fully completed app here, and I don't mean to because you're going to build this great, awesome app. But I want to make sure that we got all the basics down for you to be able to do that. So I'm going to start by looking at the data, how to make lists, how to go through lists, how to get stuff onto the screen that the user is looking for. I'm really excited for for building this. So let's dive right in. Here I am on a blank hackathon page. Great, let's get going. I wanna go over a few key concepts. And to start us off, we need data for this project. We're gonna be using lists. So I'm gonna click on data and you wanna pick, I've already been looking around. They have all sorts of stuff, politics, they have Netflix movies, right? Somewhere here, Oscar winners, all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna end up doing volcano eruptions Keep in mind, your planning guide is a great tool to follow. So I had already started mine. Ah, apparently I spelled volcano wrong, I think. Volcano data sets, what I'm going to use. This is the list, right? Elevation and the country is what I was thinking. By the way, filter, map, reduce. Filter would be if you're looking for, I don't know, a particular year, and then you're going to put the movie's name out. Map is adding or taking away some one of the items. Reduce would be looking for anything bigger than six. Paper prototype, super important. If you work at Google for a billion dollars and you're about to build a new app, they'll have you do this. They want to see your plan. They also want to know there's no dead screens. Make sure you have arrows going to all the other screens. Um, element IDs, hopefully you have this mastered at that point, right? So that's just the parts of the screen you want things to go to and so on and so forth. This is super helpful. Now, as I was saying, the list I'm going to use though is volcano volcanic eruptions. I can preview this. And what I really want is strings or words because I'm going to use the name and I'm also probably going to use some numbers here. So any list with the names and numbers has a lot of potential, like uh, movies, shows, all of them, honestly. I'm going to hit import. So if you don't hit import, you're going to have issues. I hit import. So find your list, hit import. Cool. Now, first off, I want to show you how to use a list because they're kind of complicated. I'm going to head over to variables and do var x equals blank. And I'm just going to start with names. So I'll name this variable um, name list because I'm creative, right? It's not equal to anything yet, but I'm going to use get column and drop. So what do I want to get the column of? Let me click here, choose. I have volcanic eruptions because I imported it. If you didn't click import over here, you're not going to have it. Click. And you should have something cooler than volcanic eruptions. Don't be boring and don't just do this concept. And now I'm going to choose and I'll start with the names because I called it name list. All right, let's say I wanted one of those names to appear on the screen. So I'm going to head into design and I'll just use a text area for this. And I'm going to say output area. Sure. And I'll leave it empty for now um, in an effort so that we can see it. Eh, nah, that's fine. Ah, uh, sure, I'll throw a theme on. That's ugly, that's ugly, that's also ugly. Yeah, I don't really like any of these. All right, whatever, that. Okay, so now I have a box to put my names in. What I'll do, and I'm not even going to use a function, I just want you to know how a list works. I'm going to go into UI, and I'm going to do a set text. Uh, set property. Set text. What do I want to set the text up? Well, here's my elements ID. I called it output area. And what do I want the text to be? I want to show you how I can use this list. All right, for starters, a list, well, I'm going to delete this. If it fights you on the quotes, it always does me. I use my arrow key, get behind the quotes, and hit backspace. I'm going to start with name list zero, okay? Name list zero, right? And let me now hit run. Oh, look, what's this here? Huh, I wonder what that is. Well, let me head into data, take a look at my list. And again, let me hit run again. Notice that it is the first item in the list. So when you make an array, when you make a list with code, it actually, the computer starts counting at zero. So this, even though it says one, right, this is the first thing, zero is the actual item of the index. So zero is the actual index. Now, what if I hit, I don't know, two, or here, let me show you one. Let's put out one. Boom. Oh, what's that? And so that, it's two, but it is the first index. And that's why one puts that out to the screen. All right, so now we know how to get stuff onto the screen. 
Now, how can we be specific about maybe what we want on in the list? Well, for that, we can use an if. And I'm still not even going to use a, a on event yet. I'm just going to head into code and grab an if. Okay. And so what I'll say is if, um, let's see. Let me look at my data here. Data. I can't even say that. But we'll use it. So Volsini, sure. And it's at, it's number four here, right? But that would be index three because zero, one, two, three. So Volsini. I'm going to use my if now. If I need a double equal sign, I'm going to check if name list three equals equals Valsini. So this should be true, right? Name list three does equal Valsini. What do I want to put out to the screen? Well, right now I'm putting out the name of it. I could also put yes or whatever. Let me hit run. This works because the third item in our list is Valsini, right? That's the name of it. Okay, so that's kind of neat. Maybe I want to actually put out the name. So maybe I do. And name list three, because I know it's at index three, right? So boom. Yep. Maybe I want to get real fancy and I'll put a uh, name in front of this and a plus boom reset run okay so that if works but i'm only checking one tiny little specific thing what if i wanted to check more than that well i could um let's see here let me go back into my data yep 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 okay i'm just taking a look at what we have all right so what if i do a loop and how that would work i'm going to head to control and I'm going to use a for loop. So I'll drop that right here. Now, you need to understand what this does. And it's confusing. For i is equal to 0, i is less than or is less than 4 i++. Plus plus. To start us off, I'm just going to use a console input, console log. And all I'm going to console log, delete all that, is i. Because I want you to see what this is going to print out. So yeah, that still works. Zero, one, two, three. Interesting. So I starts at zero. I must be less than four. And we add one to I each time. Each time. So I starts at zero. Yep, zero's on the screen. I then is one. Yep, one's on the screen. We then add one to I. Yep, two's on the screen. Hit the bottom, loop back around. Yep, add one to what it used to be. It used to be two. Two plus one is three. Hit output three, hit the bottom. Add one to i, i is now four, four is not less than four, and the loop is over. It's done running. Something super important I wanna point out right now, I am only going through four items of the list because i has to be less than four, so I go through zero, one, two, three, and four, the first four. If you wanna check a whole list, just like in this image, you would use name, list, or whatever your list name is, dot length. That asks the computer to get the whole length of the list and make sure i is less than it. So make sure you can look through your whole list, but I will never go past the end of that list. That's what you use to look at the whole list. All right. Well, let's see then if we're using I and we're starting it at zero, like it shows up down there. What if I do name list I? Let me hit run. Boom. Look at that. Do -do 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 -do. It outputs each item in the R name list down here. So this way we can loop through info in our list and use it. Maybe we ask the question like this, if. So I'm going to get rid of my council log, glop, but I will drop this in here. All right, now let me hit run. It should work the same, right? Because it's going to loop through the first four items, right? All the way to index three, okay? So, and once it gets there, we should actually replace three with I. So I'm checking now if index zero is equal to this, index one, index two, so on and so forth. And if it is, I'll output the name. Let's see. Yep. And I could even add an else if I wanted, but we don't really need to right now. Watch what happens though if I put this at three. Reset run. The name is never gonna come up because this item is, at the, is the fourth item in my list. It's at point four, it's at index four. So that's never going to happen. 
All right, I want to demo more about list. So let's say if you're doing a year or a number, whatever you're doing, I'm going to use the elevation. And again, this would work for years as well. I'm going to do another named list then. Okay, let's see. Var, not name list, I guess. I'm going to say um, num list because it's full of numbers. Or you could put year list. I guess I could have done elevation list. All right, now my data. Git column. What do I want? Well, volcano. Okay, boom. And then choose and I'm going to do elevation. That's what's going into my number list. Now what's really cool about this is I can use these two lists together, right? So if I go look at my data here, at index one, right, or is index zero is the West Eiffel volcano, right? But then also at index zero of my number list, well, that would be the elevation of that volcano. At index one is this volcano. And at index one of the number list, that volcano is elevation. At index three, because it starts at zero, zero, one, two, three, of the volcano name list is this volcano. At index three of the elevation list is the elevation of that volcano. So now I can do some really cool stuff because I have two lists to take a look at to use. And if you don't understand what I'm saying here, I'm going to just drag this down here for now. And I'll use a council log real quick to show you what I mean, because this stuff is whew, confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and say, and you won't need to type all this. I just want you to see. I'm going to say I. And so that will be the point of the list we're at. And then I'm going to do a plus, And I'm going to say name list I plus uh, num, the number it's at. And then plus num list I. Again, I'm not going to leave this here. I'm just demoing something. Yep, that looks as complicated because it is. Um, I'm not going to need this if right now either, so I'm just dragging that down there. All right, run. Now look what happens here. Well, first I want to just remind you, this isn't looking through the whole list. I'm not looping through the list yet. I'm just going through the first three items because I is less than three. If I wanted to go through the whole list, I could. I use the list name. I is less than name list or whatever your list is called dot length. And I'll demo that in a second, but quick reminder. All right, now let's, uh, so at index zero is this volcano. And then the elevation 600 index one yep elevation index two and that's because i'm using the name list i so at zero is this volcano and the num list at zero is that volcano's elevation just like it shows in the data first volcano boom all right now knowing that let's go ahead i'm getting rid of it i want to use my if and instead of checking for an exact name i'm actually going to check for numbers maybe so maybe i want to say if uh, volcano, uh, I don't know if, if, uh, I'm going to say 400. Nope. I'm going to say, I want to flip this. So anything with more than six, 500 elevation, anything with more than 500 in num list, I, so I'm checking each part of this list the num list and seeing, okay, is this number, is the elevation greater than 500? If so, I'm going to push that out to the text area. But keep in mind, what am I putting there? It's just the name. I'm never even going to show the num list. I'm putting the name onto the text area. Boom. And there we go. Right? So the problem with this is if there's more than one, I'll never see it. So it looks like, oh, yep, there they are. So it looks like this one's more than 600, but so are these. We never saw them, right? So maybe I would want to do something more specific. I could also print out multiple things. I'll show you more specific. Maybe I do an equal sign. So if uh, it's exactly a 3600 elevation, if the num list is equal to exactly that, then it's going to output the name. Okay, and nothing happened. So that tells me something. What was the elevation here? Oh, sure. Let me use, uh, I'll use 1117. Boom. And there it goes. It pushes the name out that has that exact elevation. All right. Now, if you want to do a list of it, right, maybe you want to put out multiple things. There's a few ways you could do that. I could do a, I don't know, I could do another list. That works. But maybe I do a var, uh, 
name string or maybe I say all names. Okay. And right now I'm going to make this equal to nothing to a empty word thing. And why I'm doing that is because down here, if I want to use a greater than sign down here, so maybe I say num list is going to be, maybe I say if 600 is less than num list i, then I'm going to pull this down and I'll show you why. Then what I'll do is I'll take my variable here, all names and set it equal to what it used to be equal to because I'm storing all these names. So all those names that were already in it, I need, but I'm going to add to it name list I because I know that this name list I is greater the elevation, right? Num lists I has an elevation more than 600. So we grab the name at that point in the list because we know its elevation is more than 600 and we add it to our all names string. Now, I might want this separated out onto different lines. So not to make this more complicated, but I'm just going to add a slash in. Make sure you do the slash above the enter key, by the way, for that to work. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. Finally, after the loop, right, because I don't want to print it out a million times, I'm going to set the text of text output to be equal to all names. Let's try this out. Now, I only see two right now because I'm only going through a teeny tiny part of the list, right? This is only going through the first three items of that list. If I want to make sure to look through the entire list, I want to do name list dot, and you can find it in, eh, you can find it here, string length or list length. Boom. So name list dot length. We'll go through the entire thing now. Now look at all the ones I got that are more than 600. Wow. So what you are doing with your hackathon is you want to have a way for the user to put in some info, right? So maybe they use, I don't know, you go into design, you ask a question up here with a label, right? Tell me a number you want or what elevation or what, what movie, look for a movie made in this year. And they use this text input, right? Uh, num input or whatever you call it. They enter information. They click a button here, and that's where you would need the on event, right? So when they click whatever you name this button, user button, I don't know, input button, anything really works. When they click that input button, you need it to trigger. You need it to go ahead, set up your variable, right? You want to go ahead and grab the text that was in this. And how do we do that? Well, to do that, we would use a get text. Once you get that text here, right? Once you get that text, whatever you name that variable, this is where you would end up comparing it. So you have a lot of options of how you can have the user type text in here, right? And then you can use your get text method. So I don't know, var uh, input num. And then I can use get text. I can grab what they entered here. Whatever I call this, I grab that. And then I can use this to compare. And right now, if I do that, it will output all of the volcanoes that are more than the elevation of the numbers they just entered, right? Or all of the movies past that year. Or maybe I'm just looking for an exact match, like I showed earlier. So I could do equals equals. I can also do with this with the name of a volcano or the name of a movie. There's a ton of different options for you to really build this out. So this was kind of a quick example to give you ideas of how to get going on this. I'm really excited to hear about what you guys make for your semester projects. And uh, yeah, make something really awesome. I, I wanted to start off just giving you ideas and uh, let you loose on the world to create something cool.